Uh, super excited to be on with you guys, man. It's been a while. What are you like? Yeah, yeah, eight hours or something? Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to uh, be talking to you too, man. It's been it has been a while. Yeah, I'm sure. glad to be here. I, I don't think I've seen you guys since uh, Uncle Ray's ice cream. Um, yeah, right. Michael, you look like you're five years older. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's just what happens, I guess, at my age. Uh, that's what happens. quick. Well, you look good doing it. Well, welcome, gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for jumping on. Let's just jump in because um, I'm sure you have plenty to do, but I wanted to just, you know, again, have this conversation of, of where you guys are at, the journey that you're on. You know, I mean, you're in California and look where we're at. We're in this snowy mess. So, oh, or sorry. I'm in a snowy mess, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on my way to Minnesota. That's right. You're in an even snowier mess. So yeah, uh, uh, we got, why don't you guys intro yourselves and then we'll just jump in. Uh, I've got some questions I'll ask you and intro yourself. Tell us where you're at currently. Everybody knows you're the hometown heroes, Linden, Michigan. I got Joey Spencer on here, 16 and 0, 10 knockouts. Um, and little man here, 2 and 0, coming up yep. on the rise. Do you feel, before we jump in, do you feel pressure because Joey's 16 and 0? Uh, no, I feel like inspired knowing that I'll be there soon enough. Love it. Great answer. All right, cool. Go ahead, intro yourselves, guys. Yep, yep. I'm I'm the big brother. I'm Joey Spencer. And, um, yep, I'm getting ready for my 17th fight here coming up on March 25th. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're about a, a month out from there from that. And I'm just, you know, right now putting everything into my training. And this is my biggest fight yet. My opponent is 19-0. And um, he's ranked in the top five of all the sanctioning, uh, top five or ten of all the sanctioning bodies as far as the world world championships uh, sanctioning bodies. So this is a big one. This is a really big fight. So this that's that's where I'm at right now. Awesome stuff, Joey. We're super excited for you. All right, my man, go for it. Yep. I'm uh, Mikel. Um, this is my third fight, I'm going for a three and I don't know too much about my opponent. I know that he has a uh, single fight to be. I'm on my way right now to uh, Minneapolis, and I'm fighting this weekend. Mikel, so I remember this with Joey, like, and for the people that don't really understand the boxing world, like, I didn't, right? Not that I'm, um, not that I know a ton about it, or I know more than I did, let's put it that way, but not uncommon for you not to really know a lot about your opponent leading up to the fight in the early stages, right? Like, I remember Joey would have times very close to the fight that opponent would change so how do you process that how do you feel about that um is it really a you you versus you more so or do you wish that you had more time to kind of prepare for the style of a particular fighter yeah yeah so i got my opponent like a couple of weeks ago and i watched a little bit you know but i don't personally um it doesn't bother me as much i just will like adapt i like just having some fun in there so i've had the opportunity to watch more of them i just haven't <laughs> Awesome. Man, I can't believe yeah. it. I mean, I saw you six months ago and you literally look like you're two or three years older. It's, it's awesome. Very cool stuff. All right. So, um, and, and Mikel, you're 18, right? Yep. Awesome. And how old were you when you had your first personal fight or your first? 17. 17. 17. Awesome. Yep. Well, so what, tell us about that dynamic. Cause generally when I talked to Joey and, and he was coming up, it was more about, you know, the dynamic with, with his dad, right? And the family. And, and I do want to share this with everybody. Like there's a lot of people doing a lot of things in the world and you're getting to witness what I believe is a truly inspirational family um, from their faith um, to their, I guess you would say fitness in the boxing ring, um, and, but to the family as well. This is a very uh, strong family. If you watch them on TV or you see them on social media, what you see is real. Like this is a, a very bonded family. And that's honestly always inspired me because I didn't have that growing up. Right. And so the first time I met uh, Joey and his family, I was always very much inspired by that, but now it's a different dynamic. Now it's, it's, it's you and, and brother going through this. How does that change for you uh, along the way? You know, I asked Mikel, do you feel pressure? Maybe, maybe big brother. Do you feel pressure, right? Knowing that, that uh, Mikel's in your footsteps and not pressure that he's going to one-up you, but you want to make sure that, that he has a great run. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, as far as pressure, I, I don't feel too much pressure. I feel definitely uh, it's a different type of nervousness when you uh, see somebody get in the ring that is uh, your blood, your family, you know, because at the end of the day, when I get in the ring, it's, 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 you know, I have some anxiety and I have a lot more anxiety than Kel has going into the ring. He's pretty laid back, but 
when he gets into the ring, because of that, because of my personality, I, I have even harder of a time because it's like, at least I'm the one getting in the ring for myself. You know, it's like, you kind of feel like it's, it's an extension of you getting in the ring, but it's, it's not you, but so it's a, it's a, it's more of a nervousness, not any pressure, but I definitely, I feel pressure on my end. Um, not pressure, but I definitely take it a, uh, like a responsibility to definitely keep, keep going. Cause I know that the more, just being that I'm the one who's kind of that's older and is going first here, I, I know that the more that I win, the more opportunities and the more every everything is just going to come easier for both of us if I if I keep getting wins. So, um, not that it's on me, you know, Kel's going to have his own career and he's right. going to make it regardless. But I also know that there's definitely it might happen a little bit smoother and we might have bigger opportunities if I make it to the top faster. So that that I definitely take upon myself and I, I think about. At the end of the day, you both are doing your own thing, right? I just feel like there's got to be that component where, you know, hey, you guys are professionals now, right? It's interesting yeah. to think about that. Like, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm 18, but I am a professional. And so now everything that I have to do, this is my job. And I think mm -hmm. so often the general public doesn't realize that. Like, you guys have trained for this all of your lives, and this is now your job. And so you have to be yeah. able to separate those two things, essentially. For sure. Right? Yep. So, so I know, Joey, like, that big brother role essentially has changed now that he's gone pro, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and I don't know Mikel as well or as long as I've known you. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just kind of getting to know Mikel here. But how has that dynamic changed? Or maybe it hasn't changed at all. Do you guys feel that um, you, your bond is stronger because of this? And, and I'm sure it's not weakened at all, but how has it changed? Is it different than it was? Uh, well, we've been doing this for a long time, so it's it's more just it's more just exciting. It's it's like I get so excited for Kel's fight this weekend. Like I've told Kel, I, I think I've told Kel this, but there's nobody in the world that I like to watch fight more than Kel. Nobody. I mean, I get so excited to watch Kel fight, even in the amateurs. I mean, I just I love to watch him fight. He's got a very unique uh, style and approach to the way that he fights that you really don't see anywhere else, and that he just so happens to be my brother too. So there's that added just, you know, it's almost like when you put a bunch of money on a game, it makes it more exciting. But he's my brother. I don't know. So I don't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, a, watching a football game is like, oh, that's fun. But when you put money on it, it's really exciting. Well, he's my brother. So it's already exciting to watch him. And then he's my brother. So I, there's definitely I, I just look forward to watching him in the ring, whether he's sparring or, or fighting. So um, the dynamic. I don't think it's changed because we've been in the gym alongside each other for a long time, but I think what's changed naturally is just that he's older now, you know, he's becoming a man and, and now it's like, we're both becoming, um, we're getting older and, and it's like, it's not so much like oh little brother who's an amateur. Now we're both professionals. So it just is, it's more exciting than anything. It, it, it doesn't change anything except for the fact that it just makes it a whole lot cooler that we're both on our, on our own journeys, but kind of the same one at the same time. And, um, I'm just, I'm just pretty over the moon about it. I'm pretty excited. Well, so Mikhail, going back to you, I mean, what was one of those memories as a child that you have, because there was a point when you, you know, obviously you guys have been doing this for a long time together, but there was a point where you weren't boxing and Joey already was right. Just by age alone, no matter when you guys started because he's older. So what did that feel like for you in those moments? What did Joey inspire you to get into, into boxing? I mean, obviously it was everywhere around you so tell us a little bit about that on how um you know your childhood with with joey as opposed to now yeah so i always tell people it's like i kind of had to learn how to box in the beginning because joey started to learn how to box and then he's always using me as a test dummy because he loved it so much and i was like well you know i might as well learn how to do it too since i was a little good at it and we ended up sticking with it but that i, I have memory of like always he would come and he would mess with me just to get me started boxing with him. And then he would let me hit him a little bit and that would be the end of it. But he always loved to like come mess with me just to get that out of me and then he would go leave me alone for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, you're smiling like, oh yeah, I remember that. Oh, that that's a definitely a true story. He, he learned how to box because it was basically like, he, you know, he better because we were doing it every day, you know? So right. like, naturally he just got good. You know, he just got good at it. Um, so we're getting some questions already on, on our, um, on the Facebook feed, but, um, I guess for both of you talk about some of the sacrifices, because again, you know, we talk, okay, we're professionals now 
and, and, and there's sacrifices along the way. And those sacrifices probably get greater the further you go into this. So talk a little bit about some of the sacrifices to get to this path. And then what does it look like now, just in general? Yeah, that's the thing people don't really realize, you know, it's like, there's the, the must be, must be nice type of mentality that people yeah. have. And, and I'll be honest, it is nice. A lot of it is nice. I mean, getting to this point, like it, it's, it's a dream come true. I mean, I, I really can't, um, you know, talk about it without smiling because of the fact that we're, where we're at, as far as on this card that I'm about to fight on at the MGM Grand, like dreams are coming true here, but it's not, you know, you can't get anywhere you want in life without some very, very, very harsh sacrifices. And me and, you know, I, I gave up a lot of my childhood. Me and Cal both gave up significant parts of our childhood and um, we're di at different ages. So it looked different for both of us, but we gave up a lot. You know, um, we spent years in California away from, from everything that we knew, spending seven and eight hours a day in the gym as children. You know, we gave up, uh, we gave up everything growing up. I mean, I gave up a lot of my, my mental health, you know, I'm sure Cal did too. Um, I, I had to rebuild myself when I, when I started to become an adult, just because it had, it was so much that we sacrificed of ourselves to get to this point. I had to figure out who I was when I got back home. That's how, that's how significant the sacrifice was to, to get to just this point. I mean, it's, it, it was brutal and it never ends as far as the things are a lot different now. I've got my fam, you know, I'm back home and my roots and family and everything. But I mean, every single day in order to maintain it, you've got to absolutely kill yourself and, and, you know, live a lifestyle that a uh, few would be willing to live. And if you do that, and I know you're the same, John, if you do that, then you can have the things that you, that you desire. You can, you know, most of the time God rewards that. So that's, that's where we're at. I mean, it's the same for anybody trying to accomplish anything. Yeah. And I love that you say that God rewards that because I'm a big believer in that. Like, you know, there's this theory of, oh, I'm just going to pray on it. And I always, I don't know why. No, yeah, you gotta, that's great to pray on it. But you have to mirror that with, with effort as well. And I think, you know, God will open those doors. You got to walk through them, but you got to walk, yeah. not, not just in hope. You got to believe and you got to be willing to put in that work. I mean, that's so big. Um, and I remember that conversation, you know, coming back home and trying to, trying to gather yourself and rebuild yourself and, and people yeah. don't see that so often it's kind of and so it's kind of cool to have joey you where you're at mikhail where you're starting at and you get to see all of that journey that goes on which maybe has him a little bit more free-spirited through all of this because he's realized that you know yes i'm a professional i still gotta have fun i gotta process all of these emotions yeah and, you know yeah. And for me, that, that's how i would do it i'm just let's just go let's just go have fun so mikhail how do you feel about that the sacrifices talk to talk to us about the sacrifices and 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 you know are there things that you feel like you're missing out on and because i the word sacrifice when people hear it like yeah whatever sacrifice but no you're really missing out on things potentially in your life and then you have to quantify what's worth it right so how do you process yeah that? yeah you know i'm still kind of we're me and joy at different stages like joy is more developed i'm still in the maybe making a couple more sacrifices stage because you look around, I've looked around like some friends, people from college, I make it high school. And me and Joey just different people. I like being around people. Joey's more like laid back and relaxed when it comes to people. So stuff like that you take some sacrifice, but it's all worth it. I know that there's a bigger picture that God has a plan for us. Love it. Love it. I'm just moving our screen around here a little bit, so bear with me. Um Joey, you trained immediately after your last fight, which was 10 rounds, right? And yeah. I believe that was your longest fight at the time. Is that yes, correct? Yes, sir. So talk about that both from a mental and physical uh, perspective and then moving into this new fight. Yeah, that was just something that I wanted to do um, because I, I went out and I, I had, you know, it was my first 10 round fight. It was my first step up fight against a, you know, a seasoned opponent and he was undefeated. And, you know, I got done with that and I was like, you know what, let's just, I wanted to just kind of see, cause I felt great after the 10 rounds, like I could have gone a lot more. So I was like, why not go out? And, you know, we had, you know, they, we had some champagne at the, uh, the hotel and we got a bunch of food and I was like, you know what? No, it's not time to celebrate. We're going to go out and we're going to get a run. And we ran several miles and then we went and, and trained another workout with Josh. I was just like, what do we have to celebrate yet? You know, we don't have anything to celebrate yet. We have not 
won the world championship yet. So I just wanted to see how far I could go. And or I wanted to see what I had in the tank and really empty my tank so that I knew going forward to just be completely confident in whatever circumstance comes. And I think I'm going to make that a tradition from now on. I love it. I love it. There was a draft pick last year and you know they always ask the draft picks, what are you going after? And, and the one guy's like, I'm, um, um, I'm going to the gym right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, okay, well that's dedication. Like the people that didn't pick him were like, shit, we should have picked him. <laughs> you know? So tell us about, tell us about your opponent this time. Yeah. Yep. And, and by uh, the way, just so everyone knows, cause you're not going to sit here and grandstand it. Um, you know, this is March 25th in Vegas, the co-main event. Uh, and your opponent is undefeated, Jesus Ramos. Ramos? Yep. How you say this? Ramos? Ramos. Ramos. Ramos, yep. Tell us a little bit about Yeah. Him. No, he's a good fighter. He's He's been in a – he's got more experience than me. We're around the same age. Um, he, he's he been really good. He's been almost flawless as a professional so far. And um, he's ranked, like I said, within the top ten of all the uh, – in the world, in all the major sanctioning bodies for the – that hold the world championships. And so this was a fight that after my last fight, we were on our way home. And I was just looking through the rankings, trying to figure out – and I didn't even – I didn't even know, you know, it's right after the fight. So I was just thinking, like, who is next, you know? And I looked and I saw Jesus Ramos, and I knew we were around the same age. And um, I was like, oh, man, he's he's right. Specifically, the WBC world title is one of the most prestigious championships that you can win. And he was ranked within the top five of that uh, or, organization. And it's always been my dream to fight for that specific title just because it has a lot of history um, to it. And... So I was like, I, you know, obviously everything that we're doing is to get closer to that that goal. So I was like, that that might be it. So I looked him up and I saw that actually he had had some some words about me in an interview, which was nothing too disrespectful. But he just was like, oh, I think fighting Joey Spencer would be a step backwards. I'm trying to get closer to the world championship and different things. But in in with in mind, I hadn't fought my 10 round fight. I hadn't stepped up yet. I hadn't fought um, the competition that I did in my last fight yet. So I wasn't too offended by it, but I was just like, hmm, all right, well, let's see, you know, if we can make this happen. So we gives you something to shoot for, right? You're like, oh, okay, well, I'm ready to I'm ready to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So and we called our, our management up and um, I said that that's the fight that I wanted. And um, I didn't really know what to expect because in boxing, you'd never see young fighters fight each other early on. You never see it. it it's it's pretty much unheard of. Most of the time, they'll they'll with you, when you've got two young guys, they'll let a fight build up for five six years and then fight down the line. So I really didn't know what to expect. What do you think changed there? Why, why why this is occurring? Well, I I think just because I specifically asked for it and gotcha. you know I think that's it. You know I I think that it's going to become more of a standard um, because I think with fights like this happening they're going to see, okay, we need to do this more because I think these are going to be the most exciting types of fights when you've got two guys that are so young that just are just fresh and, like, we're just – we're just It's got to be inspiring, you know? and that's what the crowd would want to see, right? You would think. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's what they do want to see, and that's what I've seen on comments and different things that – for years, because I'm a boxing fan. You know, I have been since I was a little kid, so I like to – I want to – I'm only 22 and I'm just really excited about the fact that now I'm in the position where I'm going to be fighting these, these top fighters, because I would like to put myself in a fan's perspective and, and say, what would I be excited about? And this is the one that I felt like people would be excited about. And then they agreed, my management agreed and, and they called him and he accepted the fight. So now it's on. So that, that's how it got me. Love it. Well, your fight uh, towards the end of March, Mikhail, you're in three days, bro. <laughs> right. So three days from now, um, you know, that's crazy. Tell us about your mindset three days out and, and what are you going to do over the next 72 hours? What does that look like for a fighter? Um, so my mindset is honestly just, like, I kind of forget I'm fighting. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest, it, it, it's one of those things that I uh, think in probably around way in time, but I don't really get too nervous for fights. I just like to go out and have fun, but we're getting to the hotel tonight and then I'm weight cutting tomorrow. And I'm weighing on something today. I'll eat up, rehydrate, and I'm fighting this afternoon. Awesome. What's I think your... it makes it like four days. Yeah. 
I don't know. I've got three, but I, everybody knows I can't do math. So <laughs> three or four days. Um, Somewhere in. What, what, talk to me a little bit about your um, opponent, right? I know you don't know a lot about him, but going into it, what do you feel like are some of the advantages that, that you have? Other than I can see an advantage already. You're loose as a goose, man. You're like, this, yeah. this is great. It's all good. Let's go. Yeah, I think I have um, all the advantages, honestly. Um, he's older. He is like 30 years old. But I have length, speed, power. And um, yeah, I'm just excited to be able to go out there and play on the show. How, how, do you, how do you control yourself from not? Because I think there, you know, people, people confuse confidence and ego, right? How do you yeah. stay confident without stepping in too much into arrogance is what I meant to say. People confuse confidence and arrogance. How do you, how do you balance those two to make sure that you don't step too far into arrogance? Um, because that could certainly be confidence, hugely important, I think, in anything we do, right? But arrogance could tip the scales the other way and play against you. Yeah, you know, that's actually funny because I'm always messing with my friends. I like, I, I'm, a, I'm a jokester. So I'm always like, hey, guys, it's like, you think I'm a big ego by any chance? They're like, oh, yeah, you need to be humble. So it's like, yeah, that's true. But, you know, I don't know. I, I just don't really think too much about it. I think um, I try to stay humble when it comes to that type of stuff. But at the end of the day, we're the best person win. And that's really the true, like, test. Because like, you can say a lot, but I actually speak a lot of things. I love it. I love it. I, when you stepped away, I was just asking him, how do you, how do you and, and you got to process this too, right? Although two very different personalities and we can see it here on the screen, but how do you, Joey, make sure that you're not stepping into, you know, you want to be confident, obviously, in everything that you do. How do you make sure your ego doesn't get in the way of that though when you become cocky? Yeah, that's a really fine line. I've dealt with it. I've battled with it my whole life, but I feel like that's what um, thankfully I have a relationship with God and I feel like he humbles us at the right times and keeps us humble. Um, and that's sometimes really hard lessons that you have to learn. And I've definitely been through. Them. And, um, but for, to kind of answer your question more clearly, like I was actually just talking to my wife, we were, I was, I had my press conference today for the fight that was live streamed. And, um, so I was going to be speaking to Ramos for the first time. Um, and I was actually feeling that exact way I was like I was really concerned with I've been feeling very motivated and very hungry and, and very confident in, in in my in my ability and in my training and just the mindset that I have coming to this fight and it would be really easy to go in there and voice that in a way that comes off as arrogant um, is this, is and, this, this is something I remember this now like because I remember you it was either you or your dad I don't remember which just like three years ago and one of you texted me afterwards and said did that seem like too much like from watching it from home did that seem like and, and it was getting along this line of being cocky so do you it seems like maybe this is something that's on your mind a little bit right because you because of your humility because of your relationship with Jesus Christ you, you it almost feels like that's a, a more of a difficult balance for you because Mikel's just like yeah I'm just having a ball and this is who I am and, and it seems like you're a little bit in, in that blurred line of like, okay, I don't want to go up to this press conference and, and, and make a fool of myself and act like I'm all cocky and, and, and all of this, because I know I still have a job to do, right? And the results of that job, mm -hmm. until it's over. Is that something that you are thinking about more than you want to be, <laughs> I guess is the best way to ask mm -hmm. that question? More than I want to be? I don't know. It's just, I think that Kel's also in a position where things are a little bit more laid back at this, at this stage in, in, in his career, things are going to be a little bit more laid back as far as like the fights are more laid back. Everything there's less, the views, there's, less views, there's, there's less views, there's less eyes, you know, and that's a good thing because you can be really like, you can just go out and, and you're learning, you're learning how to, how to handle, handle this and handle what's coming and things like that. I think a big reason why I'm thinking about it a lot is because there is going to be a lot of people watching this fight. There's going to be a lot of people watching the the press conference. There's going to be a lot of people watching the interviews. And so with that, I just really want to be careful not to, not to, you know, come across as, as arrogant because it's also a fine line because, you know, it's, it's a fight for, it's a fight at the same time. And you're going to see me talk some trash in the ring on, yeah on fight night and it's not coming from a place of arrogance it's coming from a place of of we're, we're in battle and, it, and it's mental and physical so i will definitely be talking trash in there on on the night and that's when it comes down to it that's what it, it's like um 
that's out of my control, what people think, because I'm in there to survive, you know, I'm in there to survive and to win. And, um, but anything that leading up to the fight, I just want to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to, to, for people to know that, that I do, um, you know, respect my opponent and that I do want to be humble. And, and, um, so, so that you were asking me, you know, what, how to balance that. Well, like, you know, before my press conference, I just said a prayer and just, you know, ask God to just help me balance that. Cause I make a lot of, of mistakes. A lot of times I do make a fool of myself and, and when it, it's usually whenever I rely on myself and when I'm not in tune with what God has for me and what he wants for me. And then I screw up and I end up, I've got, I've had a lot of those moments, you know, where I lose my temper or where I, you know, where I say things that I don't mean or where, you know, I'm, I'm a bad example or, you know, and I don't, I don't want, I want to limit those. And the only way to do that is to, to rely on, on God for that, you know? Well, and I think it's such a cool thing, right. For, especially for, for Macau to see, right. Because you're on this journey, like, like we all know, you know, you're, you're, I don't know, I, again, math, right. But you're about 18 fights ahead of him, 16 fights ahead of him. So he gets to see your journey, but you said something I think is really profound is that, you know, having that relationship and with Jesus Christ, but then also, and I love that we're having this conversation because a lot of times it's taboo for people and it never is for me, right? I mean, I've got the cross everywhere in our office and a huge American flag flying in front of the building, but that goes back to, and I think this is what's really important is I know who I am, right? Mm -hmm. and for you in that moment, like, yeah, people are going to stay, especially in your industry. I mean, hell, I get made fun of when I do podcasts with you, right? Because some, mm -hmm. some whippersnapper is like, oh yeah, nice jacket or whatever. I don't care. I laugh at that stuff, but I think it's important when we when we have that relationship with Jesus Christ, we know who we are and we know who we're meant to yep. be. And I think that helps makes it a little bit easier to handle and, and shed those things. Uh, Mikel, how do you feel about that? Are you faced with that stuff yet? Or you're not even thinking really yet about those things? Uh, what things exactly? Just just judgment, I guess. We could, you know, we didn't start with this conversation about judgment, but it's kind of led into that. There's a lot of noise out there. Right. And as, as obviously Joey's going to experience the, the bigger, the fight, the more the noise, right. Yeah. Or yeah. the, the, the more the negative people come out of the woodwork, right. The world is, is unfortunately loves to, to jump on people. They love to be negative. And, and where do you find your contentment, I guess, when you're on that journey? Yeah. You know, I think it just goes down to like my personality. I honestly don't care that much. If I'm being honest, you know, the first thing I think about is like, what God wants for me and after that everything else can just fall in line so I don't I guess we'll have to see though when we get there we'll see if that's really affecting me at all but I don't think it will and I pray that it won't but I guess we just have to wait and see I don't think that type of judgment really will affect me that much Awesome. I love it. Uh, what are you most excited for in this fight, Mikel? I mean, like you, you it's like you're, it, it's almost like you're driving to the fight now, just the look on your face, right? Like yeah. what are you most excited for? Is it the experience? Is it the win? Is it um, the walking, the walk up? Is it, you know, like, what is that thing that you're like, God, I, sh I cannot wait to do this. I, I just really want to fight. It's been a couple months. I just want to stay active and that's my favorite part is fighting and be able to look and critique my performance and see what I could do better, what can I do worse, like those type of things. Joey, what about you? What's that, what's, what's that big thing that you're always looking forward to? You're talking about me? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's changed a little bit for me as of late. Um, I guess I kind of look forward to different things every fight. Honestly, I've, I've been guilty of not enjoying the moment. Um, in, in the past, um, especially in my last fight, I went out there really, really having a lot of anxiety and a lot of things like, you know, um, there's a lot of things going on outside my life, outside my fighting and my personal life. And I had just had my brand new baby. And so that kind of made me feel a lot of weight on my shoulders um, to go out there and win that fight and, and move on to the next level. In this fight, you know, I'm just all about, I'm looking forward to every aspect of it, just because kind of what I alluded to at the beginning, when I was talking about, um, this wasn't guaranteed for us to get here. This wasn't guaranteed for me to be able to, I used to, you know, I've been watching fights at the MGM Grand um, in, on Showtime since I was, you know, six and seven years old, and it wasn't guaranteed. I might have thought it was back then because you dream like a kid, right? but it wasn't guaranteed. There was, there was nothing that said that I had to make it to this point. And regardless of what happens from this point on, this fight, I'm going to enjoy every second of it. 
and uh-huh. I'm going to go out there and, and I'm going to enjoy the, the fight, the chaos, the crowd, everything. I'm just going to soak it in. Um, it's a very unique feeling that many people, you know, it's, it's, a, it's just something crazy when, you know, you're trying to beat someone up and they're trying to beat you up and you've got fans yelling that all kinds of obscene things. And it's like, it's like ancient Rome or something. I was just thinking but, that as soon as you said that, I'm thinking like, gosh, we're in the Coliseum. Oh, we, man. Like, and I went there this year for my 50th. Yeah, that's, that's right. Awesome. 50th. But that's yeah, the, the thing I thought about right away is that Coliseum, right? I mean, I mean, to be there and to understand what went on there oh, and man. cheered for it. Oh, buddy, listen, and the thing is, it's not it's not very far off when you see it, because I've been in a situation where I, I mean, I've, I mean, I've been at fights my whole life and fights like this. We were at Kel's fight at the Manny Pacquiao fight, and there was a fight on the undercard after him. That was at Kel's pro debut. Guy gets knocked out cold. His eyes are in the back of his head. It took him like 10 minutes. The paramedics were in there trying to get him up. Guys die in the ring once a month at least. And you should see the crowd, the, the, just the pure joy they get from it. It's a sick thing. It's almost insane. I actually had to almost get up and leave because of the way that the crowd was being. It almost made, affected me so much because I'm like, this dude, his freaking kids are up in the front, you know, watching him and don't even know if their dad's going to wake up. And, and these people are so overjoyed by the blood and guts that they see. But it just is what it is. It's just it's the culture, but it's not far off. Just kind of getting on that on that topic, it really isn't. You know, it's it's um it's a crazy thing. But at the same time, it's like this is what we were this is what we were met, made to do. This is what we this is this is what we're here for. So I'm I'm glad to be a part of it. Well, awesome. Listen, guys, I don't want to take too much too more of your time. We've been a half hour. Um, I really appreciate the time. I look forward to you guys getting back after these flights and spending some time together. I think there's still this talk about um, Joey and I getting in the ring together. Uh, I don't know why on earth I would do that. It would have to be for a greater good other than myself. Uh, but so I'll be on the lookout for that. Um, again, I just, uh, I want to thank you guys, but I also want to applaud you. And, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. And, you know, I've, I've shared this joy with you many times, but Mikel, you haven't heard me say it. I mean, you guys have a family dynamic um that is is going to carry you way beyond anything um inside of inside of this boxing you know i say game and i get it, it's not a game but at the same time when you compare it to real life and now joey understands being married having a children right like they're having a child like it just becomes mm-hmm. very different and so from you know from the outside looking in for the people that really understand who you are man we applaud you and i think that joey Mikhail, that's why we cheer you know uh, hometown hero sure but also um just hometown um honorable good young men with a great family dynamic and and i think you guys inspire a lot of people because we all know this world there's there's a lot of brokenness there's a lot of broken families and for you guys to to just be as you truly are at home and on the road it's powerful man it really is john i want to say john hold on i want to say something too man because i want to say that you are a huge inspiration for me. And I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart, because you're everything that you just, you just said, you're, you know, there's not, if I think about a true positive, um, you just breed positivity into our entire community. You're always doing good. You're always looking for who out for who you can help. It's so much more than just about you. And man, I appreciate it because it, you know, just every down to little things like, you know, I started and turned pro and we have a lot of sponsors and things like that. And they're all great. I mean, we have really met some incredible people through that. And you're one of the people that have been there from the very beginning. There's been a handful of you like that, where it's become more than just a sponsorship. It's become more like, you know, it's, it's something deeper. And, and you, even just the little text that you send before the fight, uh, the last fight, you have no idea. It was just completely God sent. And it was what I was hearing from, from my school. This, my, there were scriptures I was reading. It was what I was hearing from other people who were encouraging me. You basically just said that, look, you're already you're already saved by by grace, and and you can just go in there with with complete confidence in that, and know that whatever happens, it was in God's will, and that was like huge, and it just goes a lot deeper than just a um, you know a partnership or a sponsorship. So I appreciate you keep doing what you're doing, brother. I, I appreciate that too, brother. And, and um, you know, with that said, I think we'll leave it on that. I, I'm I'm super proud of you guys. Uh, and you know, it's funny. Pride's one of those funny things too, right? Kind of like confidence mm-hmm. and ego. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think there's a time too, when you, when you got to say, you know what, I'm proud of myself too, for where I'm at. Yes. I still have a lot of work. Yep. 
but acknowledging what you've done and Mikel, what you're doing as well. It's awesome. Super proud of you guys. Uh, we're going to be cheering for you. We'll post all of the times and get some more posts going out so that we make sure that everybody is watching these fights. Well, everybody that we know anyway, and uh, God bless you guys. I love you both, man. Go get them. Knock them out. Knock them out. <laughs>